Soft Systems Methodologies is about helping people unravel to solve complex problems in organizations. They are complex because in a given situation, we are not always sure what to do, why, or how, or what the urgency is, or who is involved, who the stakeholders are, and what different views of the situation they have. We need an organized way of thinking our way through this. We call it soft systems methodology because soft refers to people. It's all about people and the way they think and relate to one another. Systems because we can apply the theory of systems to relationships, objects, people, procedures and resources working together in an organization. And methodology because it is an organized way of thinking and it takes us through a process of thinking about where we are, thinking about where we might be and what action to take in a given situation. Soft systems thinking is people oriented and relationship seeking. This understanding is represented by using rich pictures. When identifying systems, which will provide useful insights, the concepts of hierarchy, communication, control, and emergent properties are used. These systems are logically defined by constructing root definitions. These root definitions are used to create the selected systems conceptual models. The models represent different viewpoints which form a base for debate which can lead to feasible change and then further to action. Some of the axioms and assumptions of the soft systems methodology are as follows. Problems don't exist independent to humans. Problems are interrelated and don't exist in isolation to one another. The worldview is equally as important as that of each individual. Solutions to the problems don't exist in isolation. Sharing perceptions, persuasion and debates result in improvements of the system. And analysts cannot be separated from the problem. Hard systems look at how to best achieve and test the selected option development and analysis of the system. Systems are viewed as orthogonal entities, as systems existing in the real world. Hard systems are useful for problems which can be quantified and may tend to treat people as being passive. So, hard systems are not people-centric. The objective is explicitly defined and decisions are governed by fixed rules. Hard systems are statistically based on probability and there are fixed inputs and the outputs are known. Finally, hard systems take into account unquantifiable variables such as opinions, culture, politics and many more. The fundamental difference between SSM and HS is that Soft Systems Methodology tackles real-world problems and is basically goal understanding, whereas the Hard Systems approach assumes the system already exists out there and is more goal-oriented. The key strength and values of applying the Soft Systems Methodology to human activity systems are that the methodology gives structure to loosely defined problems by identifying and focusing on a relevant system, therefore allowing them to be dealt with in an organized manner. Soft systems methodology provides a better fit between systems and people, as well as facilitates resolution of unsolved problems and issues. In this section, we define what an unstructured problem is and describe some typical characteristics of such problems. Unstructured problems are problems that require intuitive thinking, reasoning and memory and do not just have one correct answer or solution.
characteristics. Unstructured problems are unusual, hence, in organizations, they are dealt with by the upper level managers. They are non routine, and the solution mainly relies on judgment and creativity. Their goals are vague, thus making them difficult to understand. Unstructured problems contain ambiguous or incomplete information and take relatively long to solve. The solution is mainly based on individual perception. The soft systems methodology consists of seven different stages. Stages one and two are known as the expression stages and this is where the situation is defined. The problem is still unstructured and expressed by the participants in a rich picture based on the following guidelines. Structures, processes, climate, people, issues expressed by people, and conflicts. Checkland suggests that the best way of doing this is in picture form. It is therefore important to understand the situation in which there is perceived to be a problem. Stage 3 and 4 involves systems thinking and are commonly known as the root definitions of the relevant systems and developing the model stages. These two stages move out of the real world and into the world of systems. This is the stage out of which everything else grows. And that is why Checkland called it the root definition stage. And it's the unique and most challenging part of the methodology. The root definitions and conceptual models of possibly relevant systems are developed. The root definition whereby a description of a set of purposeful human activities conceived as a transformation process. The remaining stages are again set in the real world where action can take place. During stage five, the ideal conceptual model is used to find similarities and differences with the perceived real world model. This stage answers the question, what activities should occur? Stage six involves recommendations for culturally feasible changes. And finally, stage seven requires the implementation of the changes agreed to during the previous stage. Created using Powtoon.